This review of the Jumper T Pro is probably gonna be a little bit different than some of the other reviews you may have seen. You see, when I buy a radio, I always just wish I could pick it up and hold it in my hands and see what it feels like to actually use. And while I can't hand this radio to you and let you try it, I can try to focus this review more on that side of things and give you more of an idea of what it feels like to use this radio and you know whether you'd enjoy using it as your daily driver. You can read a spec sheet, so I'm gonna mention specs here and there, but it's not really the focus of this review. Let's go ahead and take a closer look at the Jumper T-Pro. My first impression picking up the T-Pro is very positive. It feels solid and well-built and just has a generally premium feel. There's an immediate contrast to the Jumper t light And by the way, I'm gonna be using the t light a lot in this video as a comparison because it's been my daily driver radio for a long time. And I know a lot of you are using it as well. So I think it makes sense to compare it to that one. And in comparison to the t light I feel like this radio just fits really nicely in my hand and just feels a lot more premium than the t light the main body of the radio is made of nicely textured plastic, except for the grips on the back, which are a rubber textured material that feels a lot like leather. It's really nice to hold in the hand, and just in general, I was really impressed when I picked this radio up. Of course, one of the first things you're gonna notice when you pick up any radio is the gimbals and how you interact with them. I've got some conflicted thoughts here. So first of all, I'm a thumber, that's the normal way I fly, and when I pick up this radio with a thumb grip, I do feel like the XY position of the gimbals is pretty good. So my thumbs fall directly on top of the sticks and that's definitely a good thing. If I hold the radio in more of a pincher style like this, I feel like the gimbals are maybe a little bit high up on the radio. I was able to get it to work eventually, but I feel like I had to adjust my grip a little bit and it didn't feel quite as natural to hold. That thumbing grip was extremely natural. But the one thing I don't like is how far these gimbals stick up out of the radio. You might be able to see here that the T-Pro is really a pretty thick radio and the gimbals are also located flush with the front of the radio. And so what that means is that these gimbals stick up very far out of the radio. It feels like my thumbs are about a mile off of this radio while I'm using it. It's definitely one of the tallest gimbals I've used and compared to something like the T-Lite, these stick out much farther than that. I think it's gonna be fine for a pinching grip. I mean, it may actually be preferred to have a larger gripping surface area that way, but for me as a thumber, I feel like I'm gonna wanna use the shortest stick ends I can get. I was able to fly with a thumb grip with the stock stick ends on this, but I definitely found myself happier when I switched to some shorter umbrella stick ends. So that's something to keep in mind if you're a thumber and you wanna use this radio. I should also say in terms of smoothness, I didn't have any concerns about these. They are hall gimbals and to me, they felt very similar to the T-Lite and other radios I've used. Let's move on to some of the other controls and this is where the T-Pro starts to differ from other radios you might have used in the past. First, we can look at these momentary clicky buttons on the top shoulders of the radio. And I actually really like the way these work. They're positioned really well, they're easy to press, and they don't have much travel to them, so you can actually click them and press them very quickly. But you had the obvious question of how you'd actually use these buttons to arm the radio. You know, normally the arm switch would be a toggle switch, and so you'd toggle it on and that channel would stay high and that would tell the flight controller to stay armed. But these switches don't work that way because they're just momentary switches. So they just click on and off when you press and release them. It turns out you can fix this pretty easily with some configuration in Edge TX. I ended up setting mine up so that I press both of the buttons at the same time to arm like this, and then I release them and it stays armed. And then if I wanna disarm the drone, I can just press a single button because that's nice and fast. And I always want the ability to disarm quickly. That wasn't that hard to set up. I'll link a video below that shows you how to do it. And there's plenty of other ways you could set it up if you wanted to. But one thing I have to say is that it would have been really nice if Jumper had just set up that configuration from the factory. I was kind of disappointed that I had to go in and do that myself. And it made me kind of feel like I wouldn't be able to just pull this radio out of the box and use it to fly a drone. You gotta do a little bit of configuration first. I feel like they could have done that from the factory and made things a little bit easier. Moving on to some of the other controls on the top here, we've got these rocker switches that are kind of farther to the inside, and those are gonna replace your normal three position switches that you'd use to set flight modes or maybe turn on crash flip or things like that. Now, I've kind of got some mixed feelings on these rockers as well. I mean, they work pretty well. They do give you the normal three positions. I think they click fairly nicely, although I did feel like between the middle and bottom position, I didn't feel like that click was really very solid. It's, it's kind of a subtle difference between those two. So maybe that could have been a little bit better. But my biggest problem with these rockers is just that they're really pretty small and kind of hard to hit. So, I mean, at least for me, when I hold this radio, I feel like I've got to stretch a little bit to actually get to that rocker. 
and it's such a small rocker that I kind of have to be precise to get it and click it into the position I want. It makes me feel like this is gonna work for things like flight modes where you just kind of need to be able to set it as you fly, but not necessarily quickly. But I wouldn't want to use this for anything where I was trying to quickly do it. So, you know, I wouldn't want to put my arm on this or anything like that because I, I feel like it might be hard to do it quickly. So a little bit of mixed feelings there. I wish these rockers were bigger than they are. And then finally, if we stay with this part of the radio, we've also got these two scroll wheels or potentiometers up there on the shoulders. Now I've got to say, I don't use those with the things that I fly, so it's kind of hard for me to talk about how usable they are in practice, but they do feel pretty nice. They don't have a center detent, they just roll smoothly from one extreme to the other. And I will say that the spring tension is pretty tight on these. So, you know, I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing. It kind of feels like a good thing to me because I don't think they would accidentally get bumped. Uh, but you do have those two dials available if that's something that's useful for you. The last flight control I want to mention is this series of six buttons that's on the front of the radio near the top. Now this is something we haven't really seen before on a radio this small. The T-Lite didn't have it and most of the smaller radios don't have it, but it did kind of remind me of a similar set of buttons that you see on the bigger radios such as the Radio Master TX-16. I think this is an interesting control to add to the radio and it could have some pretty cool uses, but it's not set up very well out of the box. It's clearly designed such that only one of these buttons would be active at a time. So there's a little LED above each one and when you click the buttons, the other LEDs go out and only that one LED lights up. But the radio isn't set up to send all of that information on a single channel. So it's a little weird and it'd be kind of hard to actually use that out of the box with your flight controller. Now, it's easy to fix an Edge TX. Again, I can link a video below that shows you how to do that. But you know, it's kind of just like the thing with the arm switch. I don't know why Jumper didn't set it up that way out of the box. It would have been really helpful. I guess I should also mention in terms of flight controls, there are trim controls on this radio. So there's these two little five position joysticks located on the front of the radio, and you can click those up, down, left, and right to set the trim on the gimbals. Now this isn't something that I typically use flying quadcopters, but I know that you guys that fly planes do use the trim quite a bit to set the trim on the gimbals as you fly. And so I'd love to hear from somebody down in the comments. What do you think about these little joysticks? Is this gonna be, easier to use than the separate trim controls that we're used to, or is it going to be too fiddly and annoying in flight? I'm curious to hear what you guys think about that. We should also talk about the screen and menus on the T-Pro. Now, this radio does have a pretty small screen. It's the same size screen that was on the T-Lite. I'm fine with that because I don't really use the screen for much. I like to have it, but I'm not doing tons of configuration on my radio and I don't have any trouble seeing the screen. I know that bothers some people. I will say that the buttons and jog wheel that you use to actually interact with those menus are way better on this radio than they were on the T-Lite. This is a much more modern control scheme. It more closely matches other radios that I've seen and I found it really pleasant to use. These buttons are well labeled. They feel nice to press. The jog wheel is made of plastic. I know that's gonna bother some people. I think it's fine. It feels good to use. It's easy to navigate through the menus. No complaints there. Last thing we're gonna talk about in terms of controls is just a couple of ports that we've got along the top part of the radio here. So you've got a USB-C port, which you can use to charge the batteries inside the radio, or you can also plug it into the computer for firmware updates or to use with a simulator. And you've got the normal 3.5 millimeter trainer port if that's something that you need. The micro SD card slot is also located on the top of the radio and I do have some complaints here because for some reason they decided to put this slot directly underneath the antenna on the radio. And so it just makes it incredibly hard to pull this micro SD card out of the radio. If they had moved it just a few millimeters up, it would have been super easy to do, but because they did it this way, it's very hard to get out of there. It's something that I'm glad I don't have to do frequently. I was able to get it out and put it back in, but not something I'm gonna wanna do regularly. So we're about to power the radio up, but first we need to take a look at the batteries. Now, one thing that I'm really happy about with this T-Pro is that they decided to use two 18650 cells. That's a big improvement over some other radios. So the T-Lite only had a single 18650 and it didn't last very long and had a little bit of trouble powering some of the higher powered external modules. And then other radios like the Zorro use those cute little 18350 batteries that don't last very long. Really happy about having 18650s in this radio. But one thing that is a real pain is getting these batteries in and out of the radio. The way you have to do that is you have to turn the radio over and then there's these two rubber covers on the hand grips and you've got to pull those off to put the batteries in. I found this to be really hard to do. In fact, I'm gonna make you guys watch me right now, remove one of those and put it back on just so you can see what's involved in that. watch me be able to do it really fast on camera. So I was able to remove it. 
uh, and that's that's really not too hard. And you can see how the the batteries fit in there, and, and that's 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 pretty simple. But putting this thing on is such a pain because it's got all these little bits that you have to try and line up, and you kind of have to squeeze it into position. And I just really found this to be a pain. I feel like every time I do it, it just doesn't really want to go in. It's like the top one goes in and the bottom one pops out. Oh, come on, it's almost there. All right, we got it back in. So I did it for one grip. We're gonna have to do it for the other grip as well if we're changing both of the batteries out. So that's a pain. I think I'm probably gonna be charging mine by plugging in the USB-C port. I don't picture myself swapping cells on this radio. So when we power this radio up, it does have Edge TX installed from the factory, which I was really happy to see because Edge TX is kind of the newest thing in FPV radios. And basically what that means for you is that you can program this radio and you can get it to do all of the functions that you'd be able to do with most FPV radios. I'm not gonna spend any time talking about that, but just be aware that you're not gonna run into any software limitations on the radio. What I do wanna spend some time talking about is the module that's built into this radio. This version of the T-Pro does have a one watt Express LRS module built into it. That's really impressive because it's the highest wattage ELRS that you can get right now, and it's definitely the highest you can find built into a radio. Honestly, it's probably way more power than you're ever going to need to use with Express LRS. The radio also has this nice T-shaped antenna built in. I like this because it's low profile and you can even swing it out of the way if you wanna make the radio even more compact. If you wanted to use a different antenna, they do include an adapter in the box. So you can take this antenna off and put that adapter on and that gives you a normal SMA where you could attach any antenna you want. So that's kind of cool to see. Speaking of cooling, there is a cooling vent on the back of this radio. And it's a good thing that's there because this module can get pretty hot, especially if you have it on that one watt mode. That's a good reason to make Maybe use dynamic power with ELRS or maybe just don't put it all the way up to one watt if you really need that because it is going to hurt battery life and like I said the radio gets pretty warm. And while we're looking at the back of the radio here I'll also mention that you can add an external nano module to this radio. Now it may not look like it but that's because Jumper includes that module bay as a separate piece that you screw on to the back of this radio. I think this is a pretty cool solution. Now you could do that with the T-Lite but you actually had to open up the radio and plug something in to make it work. They've really improved that here. So there's a little port on the back of the radio and you can plug that module bay directly in and install all of that without opening up the radio. I think this is a great solution. I like that I have the ability to use an external module if I want to, but if I'm not using it, as I'm not in this case, I don't have to have that extra bulk and weight on the back of the radio. Good job, Jumper, I like it. There are a couple of things that you need to watch out for with this module and I do wanna make sure to briefly cover those. Now the first one's pretty minor. Express LRS requires this Lua script that you put on the SD card in the radio, and that's what lets the radio communicate with the Express LRS module, and that's how you change settings like the power level and things like that. It's a necessary part of using Express LRS, but for some reason, it's not included on the SD card from the factory. You might be noticing a continuing theme here. I don't know why they didn't do any configuration on this radio before they shipped it out to people, but you actually have to get on the Express LRS website or configurator yourself and download that Lua script and put it onto the SD card. And that might be something you do anyway when you update the firmware for this module. I mean, it's not hard to do, but it just really would have been nice to be able to pull this radio out of the box and immediately use it with Express LRS. I was a little disappointed to see if they didn't include that Lua script. The other issue might be something you've already heard about, which is that it can be hard to recover the Express LRS module in this radio if you happen to brick it with a bad firmware update. Now, this isn't something that's ever happened to me, but I've heard about it happening to people where they accidentally flashed the wrong firmware onto the module or the batteries in their radio died during the update or their Wi-Fi connection dropped or something like that, and it left the module in an unusable state. To be honest with you, I don't think this is a big problem and it's not something I'd be worried about. Pretty rare to brick a module, and if you're careful doing firmware updates, it shouldn't happen. And even if it does happen, there's information out there on how to solve this. Basically, you just have to open up this radio and you can solder one wire and close the radio back up. And you only ever have to do that one time. And then you can plug this radio into the computer and use Edge TX pass through to flash the module and recover it. 
Jumpers also let me know that they're gonna be fixing that in future production runs of this radio, so chances are the radio you get won't even have that issue. I just think that's way overblown. I don't know why people are making such a big deal out of it, and I don't think it's something that should stop you from buying this radio. All right, so we're almost done, and I'm about to give you my overall thoughts on the radio, but let me just quickly mention two things. First, they included a case with the Jumper T Pro, and I was really happy to see that. You know, with a lot of radios, you have to buy the case as a separate accessory, and it is a nice thing to have if you're transporting the radio. It helps keep it safe. So I really did appreciate that they included that, and I felt like it made this radio a better value. I also want to mention the manual they included with the radio and you know normally I wouldn't mention a manual in a video like this but I was really impressed with this manual. It looks really professional, they've got nice pictures and diagrams, everything's well written and this was really helpful for getting started. I felt like they had good information in here. Good job Jumper, I like seeing quality documentation and that's definitely something I'd like to see more of in future FPV products. So overall, here's what I think about the Jumper T Pro. I really like this radio. I think it's a big upgrade over the T-Lite and I really like the improvements I'm seeing here. I feel like the control scheme is modern and there are some things that I didn't like about it and a couple of things that I found hard to use, but in general, I do think this is an improvement over what we've seen in the past and I'm excited to see things moving in this direction. I feel like the radio is well built and premium and in the day-to-day -day use, it just feels like it's on a totally different level from the T-Lite. I love having Express LRS built in and that one watt of power is more than I'm ever going to need for normal flying around, so I'm happy about that. And I just have to say that this is the most comfortable radio I've held. I've tried all of the ones that came out recently and this one just feels the best to me. It feels the most natural to hold and honestly the most premium. I really like the way this feels. You know, in the end, buying a radio is always going to be a series of trade-offs. There's a lot that I like about the Jumper T Pro and a few things that I don't. But in a world where we don't have unlimited choices for FPV radios, you kind of have to pick what's most important to you and buy based off of that. For me, I think the feel of this radio is unmatched and I like the features it provides. I think there's a pretty good chance that it's going to become my new daily driver radio. But that's gonna do it for this review and I hope you guys enjoyed the deep dive into the Jumper T Pro. As always, I'd love to hear what you think about it, so make sure to leave a comment down below with your thoughts on it. And I've got links down in the description, so if you want to purchase the radio, I do always appreciate it if you use my links to make those purchases. Thank you so much for watching this video, and I'll see you in the next one.